This lesson introduces Active Directory. By default, when you install a brand new installation of an operating system, it's a member of a work group, and this can be seen in Server Manager. In this case, this machine is a member of a work group called Work Group, which is the default. A machine in a work group has its own Security Accounts Manager database, or SAM, and this stores information about the user accounts, passwords of those user accounts, some attributes, and group memberships. And each machine has its own SAM, and so this can get very complicated to manage if you have a lot of machines. With each machine having its own SAM file and its own passwords for accounts, it's very difficult to move between machines. For this reason, the concept of domains was created, and a domain features its own originally security accounts manager file, which was then used by all the machines that were a member of that domain. Now, when a machine joins a domain, it still has its own local SAM file. However, when it's logging on, when users are using that machine and authenticating and authorizing for resources, they're actually using the domain's security accounts manager file. However, SAM had some limitations. It wasn't a true directory service that could be used by applications or extended, for example. And so Windows 2000 introduced the concept of Active Directory. Active Directory is a true directory service. And the goals of Active Directory are really to be available via standard means. For example, the Lightweight Directory Access Protocol, or LDAP. Be able to store information about all aspects of a business, including application, resource data, and not just the users. It was to be extensible, be able to include custom attributes, be fully searchable, and to be granular, to be able to give different people different permissions on different parts of the Active Directory. There are really three things we require in a directory service, a method to store and arrange the data. Active Directory chose to use X.500. Now this was originally designed to be used with OSI networks, and it does have its own directory access protocol. However, the part of X.500 that was really adopted was the hierarchical nature. So for example, here in this overview view, I can see I have a domain, and then I have containers that can contain objects. I have organizational units that also can contain objects, and there is a difference between a container and an organizational unit, which we will cover later on. But it allows me to create this hierarchical storage of objects. I need a method to locate the data. So the location is DNS, which is why those service records that we talked about in the DNS module are so important. This is how clients can actually find domain controllers, find global catalogs, find an authentication source, a Kerberos source, for use with the applications and functions they're performing. And then there are methods to access the data. And for this, Microsoft used LDAP, this lightweight directory access protocol. This is a standard protocol operating over port 389. And what this allows Active Directory to be used by is not just Windows clients, it can be used by any LDAP client, allowing other applications and services to interface with the Active Directory, indeed offering that true directory service. When you consider the Active Directory, there are various components that make up the AD service. And really those are broken down into physical components, and logical components. So a physical component is an actual real world object. For example, the domain controllers themselves. These are servers, they could be physical, they could be virtual machines, but they actually exist in some physical landscape. We have the Active Directory database itself, and this is stored in this ntds.dit file. So that is the Active Directory database. Then we have global catalog servers, and global catalog servers are most useful when you have multiple domains. Imagine I have 20 different domains in my organization and I wish to search them easily. If I want to search for a general object such as show me John Savile, show me all the members with this attribute, then having to manually search every domain would be cumbersome. The global catalog is there to help perform common searches by storing a subset of attributes of every object in all of those domains in the forest. And there are various types of domain controllers. There is the concept of a read-only domain controller, again, a physical object. Then you have the logical components. So if we think about the Active Directory as a database, there are actually different parts of that database that are replicated around. 
You may recall back to the DNS section when we talked about the ability to have application partitions to replicate DNS to every DC in the forest and every DC in a domain, both of which where they are DNS servers. Well, there are actually five partitions by default available to any one domain. We have a configuration partition. So this is the configuration of the forest. So any configuration that is forest wide such as your network definitions, your sites, is stored in that configuration partition. Then we have a schema. The schema is really the blueprint of the Active Directory. It tells it what objects can be created. It tells it what attributes are available to those objects. The schema is shared between all domains within a single forest. There's the domain itself partition. So domain controllers in different domains would have a different content here. All the domain controllers in a single domain replicate that domain's information. Then we have these forest DNS and the domain DNS zones. So there are different partitions that actually make up the Active Directory total service. I talked about the scheme already, that blueprint. We have domains. Domains aren't a physical object. Domain controllers are, but a domain is really just a grouping of objects, of user accounts, computer accounts, groups, a security database, and it's thought of ideally as a boundary of both administration and as a boundary of some replication. We have the concepts of trees and forests, which we're gonna go into more detail in a future module. We have sites. So one of the great things about Active Directory is the ability to understand your physical topology. So you may have different locations. In my example, I have a cave and a lab, but imagine you had Dallas and Houston, New York, Chicago, London, Madrid. And the key thing here is you describe that physical topology into these logical components. You create sites, London, Houston, whatever. You define the IP subnets you have, and then you link those IP subnets, which are normally geographically based, to a particular site. So now what you have is Active Directory is actually aware of which domain controllers sit in which physical location. They're aware of where a client is. So when a client wants to authenticate, well, it can tell, hey, this client is actually in London, so I should find a domain controller in London to authenticate that user against. It's gonna be the most efficient use of the available network. So we have these sites. We have organizational units, which allow us to actually group objects together. And not just group objects, but really the important part of an organizational unit is I can apply policies and I can really delegate administration. There are some other uses. So grouping objects is one. I may want to hide objects, which can be another purpose. But the primary two reasons we create organizational units are to delegate administration and for group policy application. When you think about designing your active directory, the goal is always to keep it simple. So you want to start with a single Active Directory domain and a single organizational unit and then add additional organizational units based on administration, based on group policy application. You would only create additional domains if there was some very compelling event, such as maybe political reasons to separate. Maybe there is a vast geographical difference and the replication traffic would be an issue between them. But we always want to minimize the amount of organizational units minimize the amount of domains to really try and keep it simple and minimize the maintenance overhead. This ends our initial lesson on Active Directory.